Alex, you quit your job in March, correct me if I'm wrong. So big, big um, milestone, yeah. How was that? How was that? Talk, talk to me about it. I've had a couple of different corporate jobs and I've been with this with this company in particular for, for probably 13, 14 months or so. And it was, I say underwhelming because I wasn't used to the traveling. I wasn't used to going and being tired from all the road travel, but it was still such a, it was almost like the shackles had come off because it was, it was scary because I was now responsible for my own income. Just bought a house, so I had a mortgage to pay, and it was, it was a weird, a weird time. But on, honestly, the most fulfilling and most amazing feeling, like just being able to say goodbye to corporate life. What's up guys, Jordan here. Today we are joined by Alex, who is the owner of Social Flex. He's a member of the Affluent Academy and he's absolutely smashing it with his agency. He started only eight months ago, quit his corporate rat race job in March. There's now making six figures with the company. So he's killing it. I wanted to get him on so he can share his story and his success with you guys. It's been a long time coming. So Alex, thank you so much for being here, mate. And first of all, we'd like to start these off with a bit of an introduction. So if you can bring people up to speed of what you were doing before and why you became to... Uh, become an agency owner, that'd be great. Cheers, mate. Cool. Thanks ever so much, Jordan, for having us on. It's always nice to obviously give back and especially when you're the, the first mentor I had, if you like. Um, so a, a little bit about us and I guess the, the story behind, I suppose, Social Flex. So very much like yourself and lots of others out there, they can probably resonate coming from almost a corporate job, being sick of the nine till five. I always knew that I wanted to, to run something myself. So it was almost on the horizons of, of starting up a company, started up some, some other companies in the past, drop shipping, um, doing some other consultancy, toying in the, in the car space. Um, but it was very much A-levels, university, uh, going down the corporate ladder, working for some of the world's largest tech companies. Um, and my first real job, I guess, was was working for a graphic design company while I was while I was at university. So that's where my first interest, if you like, within the whole digital marketing space came more more so about around website optimization and, and organic socials. Um, so that's where the first interest came. Um, and then, as I say, did did two, three years working for a couple of really large PC companies. Very good experience. Like a lot of people say in the corporate world, it is good experience. You get good exposure to, to brands on the CV. If people care about CVs anymore, I always say to my younger brother, CVs actually mean nothing, especially if you look at, you know, LinkedIn with Stephen Bartlett and some of the other big guys out there in the social space, a CV doesn't really mean anything in this day and age. So it's all about experience and putting yourself out there on, on socials and people actually resonate really well with that. Um, and then as everyone does, you fall down the rabbit hole of, of finding ways to almost make money online and follow almost passions on what, what you like and came across your humble self, dived into the rabbit hole of, of YouTube for several months before obviously um, looking at enrolling in the academy, learning some obviously some of your best practices and, and putting it putting it into practice really. And that's where it, that's where it all started. Nice, nice. So you came from the the corporate job. So, I mean, what was when you were jumping into corporate? Was the motivation? Were you financially motivated? Were you career driven? What was what was the drive behind your career choices? Um, I've always I've always been fascinated by technology. First off, and I always thought it's quite a safe place to be, just because obviously that's that's the way the world is going. Everything technology is always evolving. So I like the fact it was fast paced. Um, I liked the being being surrounded by technology, so Apple PCs or anything else in between. So it just seemed like a, a natural place to go. Yeah. Um, and during university, you know, it, it's when you when you're at uni, it's very much a case of right, try and get a placement scheme, try try and get on a, a graduate program or something. And everyone just gets shoehorned into into doing this, and not many people actually get a placement. So I say I was lucky of, of getting a placement. I did work really hard to get that placement, mm. um, but it was just a natural the next step in that corporate corporate life really find a big company join it the salary is normally okay when you come out of university you know 18 20 grand seems like a lot of money <laughs> so you pretty much go down that down that route and then you quickly realize that actually it's not all that that, that glamorous yeah. and it's almost imprisoned to a to a desk and that is that is your role but like with everything you you learn from the process you know you build some good connections um and it's it, it is good experience a lot of people say you know, go and set up your, your own company first. But I do think the grounding you get from working, especially from my case, and you probably found the same that you get from the corporate life does set some good foundations up for you when you're going in to start your own business, because you've got more of an idea around the moving parts, if you like. 
Definitely. I think it teaches you a lot. I mean, you get the, what you get is that resilience and you also get a lot of discipline. You can't piss about in a corporate yeah. job. It's not like working in a, in a cafe or a restaurant where people yeah. are taking so much time off and pulling sick. It's like, it's not that kind of life and it's dog eat dog and, and people come and go and they, they're not afraid to chop you off and replace you with someone else. So I think that teaches you a lot and builds you a lot as a person. Um, but you, you, you followed a very, forgive me saying, a cliche or or textbook journey yeah. from like going to school going to college going to university by the way all things that I did as well yeah. but it's like that 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 company that or, or not company the norms the society norms that yeah. ingrain us and, and and make us robotic people make us machines right so we we, we both followed that same production line but yeah. ended up on starting our own company our own companies but w- what was that pivotal point for you what was the moment when you started that co- that corporate job that you realized okay this isn't necessarily for me i don't want to continue out a life within this world yeah well it's it's an interesting one because like a lot of people always say, your family obviously has a huge impact on, on you. And my family are literally the most supportive people you could ever wish for as, as parents. And they never force me to do anything in terms of, you know, you know we're, not, we're, not, we're not a special family by any means, but they're very much a case of, right, if you want to do this, you do that. Go to university, that's, that's safe, as, 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 as people mm. always say. Mm. Um, and I think it was just the, the realisation was, when I started actually doing self-education and all that sort of stuff, and you realize that actually having a job and working at having a salary is actually quite risky because unless you're in sales or some, some, you know, you can work your way up quite, quite, quite quickly, which I know sales, you typically can, can earn quite a lot more if you, if you're, if you're good at it, especially from a commission perspective, it is quite a slog. And it sounds, it sounds cliche, but it's not difficult to start your own business. If you've got confidence in yourself for one, if, if people, all the feedback I had when I was, you know, working in the corporate life, they were saying, you know, you hold yourself very well. And if you can hold yourself well, you're confident, like everyone does and, and can do with, especially in the agency space, there's no reason why you can't connect with other people and, and win business and win clients. And then obviously you need to be able to deliver that. So it was the whole self-education piece, I think, you know, reading some, reading some, a couple of good books, jumping on YouTube, you know, the slight edge, I'll always recommend to absolutely everyone if you're looking at even improving if, if you're in the corporate life, one of the best books, I think, for, for changing your mindset on actually what you can achieve by just making incremental changes and steps every single day. So I think that was one of the biggest changes that made me realize, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to be a slave to the system the rest of my life. I always knew deep down that I wanted to run something of my own, yeah. build a team. I love the responsibility. Um, and that's, that's pretty much where it started, I think. What did you say the book was that, that, that really helped you out? The Slight Edge. The slight edge. Cool. Were there any others that, that, that stuck to mind when you were first starting out? Um, as, as people will probably always say, uh, Think and Grow Rich, really yeah. good book. Um, rich Dad, Poor Dad, really yeah. good in terms of, I think that's that's one of the best books to, to make you realize that you've got to start building your assets, start building yeah. your portfolio of, of things that can, can work for you as yeah. opposed to, you know, being a slave to, to earning, earning money, trading your time for money. I think I think one thing that, that that as you were just saying that about university and and about self education and and that was the, that moment that really changed your self education. Yeah, yeah. I think that without realizing, going through the education system mm. actually creates a subconscious desire within us to continue to learn. learning. Because I I always repelled. I was always one of those people that repelled forceful learning i didn't like being told okay this is the way and and, and which is ironic because in the world there are lots of things which are this is the way it's done this is black and white and that is it yeah. but i always chose subjects which didn't have that element to it it was creative it was graphic design it was media it was 3d design it was architecture all of these things that don't have these well i, I thought don't have these barriers but when i yeah. went to uni there were still these design norms and these things that I wanted to push through and change and challenge but as a university student I actually learned quite quickly you're not actually studying and going through an exam to pass based on some kind of curriculum lots of it is actually based on the decision of your tutor and their style so if their style didn't align with my style they didn't want to know and I didn't want anything to do with that but because I was still in the education system I had that self-desire to learn new things um, like I hated books. Like I, I yeah, still don't. I'm, like the same. I, I, I'm not going to lie, man. I, I don't. I don't like books, right? No, I love what they can teach me. 
but I really don't enjoy like when I sit down I might read like half an hour book it can I'm be so proud of work. myself afterwards. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, but I'm, I'm reading the lines and I'm like going through it like I'm take, reading a page like two or three times over so I can take on the information I've never really completely warmed to it yeah. but at the start when I, when I did it I was I was still obsessed with the information I was getting from it like The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod that book changed yeah, my life really good book. my habits were useless yeah um but I, but I think that's an interesting take because I, I'm sure that people who are in the education system, even if you don't enjoy it and you, you hate that authority, just know that it is a good thing for you because it's going to ingrain that subconscious desire to continue learning within you. And, it, and it's interesting because now when I look back at school and all, all, all those other things, you know, from an education perspective, I, you know, I was I was not a clever kid at school, like, you know, C's and D's and E's, you know, uh, at GCSE and at A-level. Mm. And then as soon as I go to university and I understand, right, OK, I do have an interest in business you know, smashed a first class degree out of the water, which is very much, you know, that was the first time I've ever seen like success in the education space. And I was like, yeah. actually, Alex, you know, you're not actually shit at education now because you you can you can do something based on a passion you've got. Yeah. And I think when you look back at also the responsibilities, when you're at school doing GCSEs, it's very much you're in this cage. It's almost like a prison. A-levels is almost a step up and you've got a bit more responsibility. Then uni again, you've got more responsibility. It's up to you to, you know, time managed to you know put the put the work in to, to get the grades to do mm. the studying and then almost the job is almost back back to school again because you're in this nine till five caged environment and almost the freedom you get from uni is is, is out the water and it's gone yeah <laughs> so you have to start that all again yeah i think that's a shock to a lot of people these days yeah. it's like going into that job and then it's like crap this is not this is, especially for things like covid as well like covid 19 yeah. would have pushed everything uh, Dan, block, beep that out if that's going to get us down ranked on the algorithm. Yeah. You <laughs> should weird at the minute about the C word. Really? That's uh, <laughs> weird. Uh, but, but, but even with that, it's like it's, it's propelled people forward and like made them think, okay, I don't want to be in an office. Like companies are like having to completely change the way that where, where people are coming in and they're working and they're doing like maybe three days at home and two days in the office and all of that. And, and I think that, but that as a society, we're completely changing our views. And we're completely mm. changing our views towards freedom and how we how we align work with that yeah. um, and, and how we respond to it. Um, so you you let's go let's move on to your agency. So you um, you, you quit you you started your agency eight months ago. You had a full time yep. job. Let's go through that. So how was that managing the nine to five, the corporate job, and running your agency at the same time? What how were you managing your time? What did that look like? So. It was, I, I suppose it was quite tough in the beginnings because I'd obviously found that I wanted to, I wanted to start this business. I had an interest in marketing. I had an interest in, in helping people, especially smaller businesses with, with growing, which is almost what we specialize in, helping smaller independent brands to grow as long as they've got good proof of concept and all that sort of stuff. But initially, because my corporate job was very reliant on me with lots of face-to-face -face meetings, um, you know, being, being a business consultant with that space, it was on the road a lot. So at the start, it was very, very difficult to, to almost get past the, the two, three, four thousand pounds a month mark. People always, you know, it's, it's, it's from a revenue perspective, it's always the goal to get to 10K or whatever it might be and then set the next goal. But for me, it was very much a case of having enough in, income to replace my corporate, my corporate job. Yeah. So that was the biggest motivation for me. So, you know, I spend a lot of time when I, where I probably shouldn't, wherever I could have to, to do outreach, for example, or to, to do some research on brands that I might be interested in reaching out to, or, or again, using my network and reaching out to people that I knew, because I think that's one of the areas that people really overlook, especially if you're coming from a corporate world, really rely on your network. And luckily, because my job was very much face to face, I built up a lot of connections on LinkedIn, excuse me, and that was a good place to start. So reaching out to my network, friends, but again, it was very time consuming. And obviously I had to, I was teaching myself almost the fundamentals behind paid advertising as I was going along. I knew the strategy from what I was doing in the day job, but I didn't know the actual how to do. I didn't want to go outsourcing straight away because I think building a team and learning it yourself is so much more important. And then when you understand it, then, then to outsource it. Um, but it was very tough in the beginning. So as soon as lockdown came, came about, you know, as unfortunate as the whole thing has been, it was actually, you know, a perfect opportunity for me to have more time because I wasn't spending four hours a day traveling to client meetings all over the UK. So when that happened, you know, obviously I was, I was very, I had to be very, very structured in my day. So I'd spend, you know, like, like you, you, you have to get up earlier. I was always getting up at, you know, six, half six, just to get some outreach in, in the morning. 
um, and then do the do the day job, smash out some some more outreach and some follow ups, which is the most important part when you're starting. You know, if you haven't got sales, you haven't got outreach, you haven't got your numbers to begin with, it becomes very very difficult to actually to get that first client. And a lot of people say, you know, oh, you should be charging a thousand pounds a month or two thousand pounds a month for your first client. And yes, I had I had some income coming from my first client. I think it was about two hundred fifty pounds a month, something like that. But the case study from that is the most important part. So you. Whenever I say it, speak to people now, it's so important just to have somebody to trust you in the start of your journey, because if you can deliver value first, and if it's a month of free work, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that is absolutely nothing if you can get a golden case study, because you can leverage and leverage and leverage that case study. Um, and then people start talking about it. like, as soon as as soon as a lot of people start out in this space, you just get known for perhaps the brands you work with or the industries you work in. So mm-hmm. That's that's almost how it then spiraled on. So yes, referrals are important, but now that you know I had the time from lockdown to focus on the outreach, to focus on the numbers, it was almost onwards and upwards from there. That's so. That, I'm so glad you said that. It's so true because like a lot of people get so obsessed, and and it's probably the fault of so many other people online yeah. in the space as well, like other 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 gurus or people providing content. Like everyone's always shouting about like these 10k clients, these 15k clients, these 2k clients. Not important. It's it, it, it's so irrelevant when you're first starting out. Like money is not your goal. Like when you're first starting out, like a first client and a case study is way more valuable than 10k in your bank account because 10k in your bank account, you're going to spend it. If you've got no case study to leverage with that, you can't use it to get anything else, right? So yeah, yeah. it's so important to get that first case study. And like some people watching this because people like make excuses let's be real I'm like but some people watching this are like okay cool they're listening to you say uh i use your use your network you should use your job use all these things right everybody has somebody that knows yeah. a business owner everybody regardless of whether you've worked in corporate i didn't use my my, my business network i just used friends and family yeah. so i spoke i had a friend who had a dad who <laughs> like yeah. lots of people do and his yeah. dad had a business and his dad and they i charged him a very small retainer it's a family run um, the furniture store they were my, my second ever my second ever client yeah um and i started, signed my first in that space of a week as well and was able to leverage that and so these you don't just have to use people who are within like you don't need to be in a corporate world to be able to use an existing network that's why when we're in the academy i, I give people like a framework for yeah. a message you yeah. put out on your facebook on your socials to say hey look i'm doing this this is what i'm going to start doing do you know any business owners? If you do, put them in touch with me. And yep. working for those people, even if it's for free because they're hesitant to work with you to start off with, that's going to be way more valuable than any service retainer you can get when you're first starting out. 100%. And I think if, if, if it's one piece of value that anyone can take away from this video, it would be very much a case of don't think about the money. And it's very, very easy to say that, I think, when we're on the other end. But, you know, I'm still very, very new into this journey. You know, it, it's still very, very new. And if you can get a case study, you can get someone to put their their value and their faith in and their trust in you to, to deliver a service, even if it's for a, you know, a couple of weeks just to trial you out. And if, they're, if you can communicate effectively, if you're transparent in your approach and you can deliver them results, or even if you can't deliver them results, but you're open and transparent about the process and saying, hey, look, it hasn't been effective for you, but we've realized X, Y, and Z are the reasons that could be impacting why your paid ad strategy isn't working you've added some value and it's cost them absolutely nothing. And you've got a ton of experience from it. Yeah. Um, and again, touching on the whole outreach thing, I think that's again, something that a lot of people brush over and people always say you need to hit, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, a hundred messages a day to, to businesses. And, you know, yes, we're doing around that well, around a hundred probably a day now that we've got systems in place to do so. But when you're starting off, quality outreach is so much more important than quantity because if you're reaching out to say 10 companies but you're you're finding a piece of information about that business online on their about me section you've seen some posts they've done some charity work that they've supported and you can write a nice email or a good linkedin post or a good instagram message and just get that person's attention and add some value to them you'll always get a reply i would have mm-hmm. thought apart from instagram's a bit funny because you might end up in the spam spam boxes or whatever it might be so but quality outreach, I do think, is, is something that a lot of people perhaps stay away from just because it, it seems harder and more time consuming to, to do. Yeah, I think I think my mentality when I first started, because I came from that that like a really hardcore, hard sales based mm. role where we had to make 100 cold calls a day was like, this is going to be hard sales. And I always told the story about my first ever meeting where I, I went in with this hard sales mentality. I used all of these tactics and just wasn't working. And it's just a conversational problem solving exercise. Yes. And you strip it right back to that. It's just one human being helping another person. And you need to have that within your outreach. I'm yeah, sick yeah. to death of people saying to me, Jordan, I'm not getting any results, not getting any yeah. clients. And they said, I've, I've reached out to 300 businesses. I'm like, bloody hell, you've reached out to 300 businesses. 
okay, let me see your outreach. And it's just copy and pasted message to every single person. Like yeah. businesses, business owners, but as an agency owner, we learn very quickly that business owners get very frustrated with outreach because yeah. sometimes when you do cop up with your outreach, you'll get someone telling you, like you'll get, you'll get some pretty insulting emails, right? People don't yeah. like it because they're getting tens and tens and tens of emails from various companies every yeah. day, completely unpersonalized. One thing that I've actually started doing, which is working really well, a little bit of personalization, is I've actually started buying the products from the company that I want to outreach to. Yeah. And it works and, really well. And, and this, like, is, hey, something, look, cool, really this is something which I got caught up on. And a note to everyone out there who's thinking about doing the same is I've said a few times that I've, you know, when you're starting out, you try anything to get someone to reply to you, right? So I was very much, oh, I love the products. I bought this. And then I got, the, as soon as I sent that message, I got a message back probably probably a day later saying, oh, nice. Um, what, what did you buy? And uh, what order number was it? And I was like, <laughs> oh, God. So I literally... The funny thing was that I I hadn't bought the product, but my brother had. So mm-hmm. I, I actually was genuine. I knew of the product and all that sort of stuff. So I had to come clean. So that's when I started using voice messages. And again, if people haven't done voice messages or videos, especially on Instagram, it's a great way to show people you're not a robot, just spamming messages. And it adds personalization. And even if someone said no or go away or I'm not interested on the first message, if you then go back and send them a personal voice note to say, hey, look, um, I wanted to come on and send a voice message, blah, 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 showing you're a human being. And I, we normally find that, that that does work really well. And it's just simple little things, the same when you're doing your outreach. Find the business owner's name if you can. And if, if you know, if people are just spamming messages saying, hello, company, or just hello and nothing else, or hey and nothing else, people are just going to put that straight in the bin. They don't care. You're not, you're not making any effort to, to actually make it personal to that person. So why should they spend some time replying to you? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, and 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 even still, like sometimes when you you put in that effort, it's just not going to yeah. go your way. My yeah, my, my, my partner is, is is running a social media management company. She's doing content management on Instagram, and and we we went to the Cotswolds last week, uh, the week before, went camping, and then and we went to this restaurant, and the day afterwards, she actually she's come to this restaurant, and she she accidentally put Monday into the Sunday, where she went on the Sunday, but she put on Monday. Oh, we we went to the restaurant, we had, and and this but this company replied like a really shitty message, like. Oh, yeah. you, you didn't attend next 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 time you you, you outreach us uh, at least actually attend our restaurant instead of attending you did or something like that and then like she responded saying oh i just got my days wrong it's the day before and they were like super apologetic when they were like oh god like we, we but, screwed but up this here. is it that people have got su- such a big like defense mechanism up just because especially on instagram it's just so flooded with with rubbish all the yeah. time and even if you are sending a genuine message like you just said you you will always get people that just say uh, you know, I don't believe you. And if if you, I think that's again where people you've got to you've got to mix like traditional outreach with with online. Like even now, if you can start to go into like restaurants or bars or pubs or or, or companies just to show your face, sometimes like like people do cold calling, it's the same. You're just adding a bit more personality, which is where I suppose the whole omni-channel outreach um, methods are effective. Because in, if you're always focused on Instagram, you know, and it's not working fine, try something else. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's not the be all and end all just being all on Instagram. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and, and ultimately what works for one person won't work for another person. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's really important to test out all these things yourself. That's why I'm always, I think some people are sometimes disappointed when I'm like, okay, when I give you a framework, a script and all that stuff. And then I say to you at the end, look, this is the framework. This is your script. You should follow these, this, this loosely. And I want you to go and, and customize this yourself and, and put it in your own words. And I think people think, well, why isn't there just this word for word thing that I can follow, which there is, which I give you. But if you do it, then it's probably not going to work for you because it isn't you. It's not you. It's me. So it's yeah. like you need to be able to do Instagram messages, do it LinkedIn, do email, do do video, do voice, do Loom videos, all those things just to test out. Because there's some people, like we've got people in the academy who have literally just focused on Loom outreach because when they're on camera, they smash it. They build rapport. Yeah. They've got this massive smile on their face. People warm to them and they're like, yeah, they've just got that on long. There's other people who will do that will be complete robots. So it's been absolute and there's nightmare. no point doing it yeah but maybe they can copyright well and they can send emails and i think you have to test all of these things because there is no one concrete strategy that just works for absolutely everybody and ultimately all these strategies let's be real all these strategies are are only just to get you off the ground yeah. like the rest of it is that compound effect of your agency it's those referrals it's the organic stuff it's the reputation it's it's knowing the strategy that works for you and using that it's ads it's whatever that may be but all of those initial outreach strategies are just to get your foot off the ground like i don't know about you i don't want to be well i don't but no agency wants to be like just sat there outreaching all day we've got to get to that point where we we have a business that we that that they're self-sustaining we can build a team and all of that which we'll come on to in a minute yeah 100 percent. and i think that's what you just said there is so important because 
when whenever people are doing outreach again like you said it's it's not about the copy and paste strategies everyone is different so you've just even if you try every single outreach strategy and you get more success from one just double down on that on that method that works for you like for me personally and probably you the same I'm, I'm i'm much better in front of cameras and doing loom videos and sending voice messages mm -hmm. so you know that's what i will do personally mm -hmm. but you know if i've got some of the team that, that aren't happy doing that you know we've got a couple of guys that literally are just doing outreach perhaps just on instagram or, or linkedin and just just sending genuine messages of interest and you're always going to get haters you're always going to get people that, that aren't interested but you just have to find the channel that's right for you definitely definitely 100 it's all about working it out for you um so so Alex, you quit your job in March, correct me if I'm wrong. So big, big um, milestone, yeah. How was that? How was that? Talk me, talk to me about it. To be honest, it was it was odd because obviously we were in lockdown. Um, so I had been in the kind of already had that. Like, yeah. So I already had that kind of separation, and I, you know, the majority of the majority of my job, I've had a couple of different corporate jobs, and I'd been with this with this company in particular for for probably 13, 14 months or so, and it was. I say underwhelming because I wasn't used to the traveling. I wasn't used to going and being tired from all the road travel, but it was still such a, it was almost like the shackles had come off because it was, it was scary because I was now responsible for my own income, just bought a house. So I had a mortgage to pay and it was, it was a weird, a weird time, but on, honestly, the most fulfilling and most amazing feeling, like just being able to say goodbye to corporate life, just because, you know, you, you always have this, this this mindset that oh yeah i always want to be working my own business i want to be doing this i want to be doing that and when it actually happens and it slaps you in the face and you're actually you know you're, you're day one self-employed it's very much okay this is quite scary now and it just it just gives you that motivation to to, to work harder and people will always say you know you work a lot harder when you're self-employed and it is definitely the case but it doesn't feel that much like work because you are more enjoying the the process the journey like everything is new. Everything is is completely new in terms of starting a business. You know, I was only just finding my feet. I had, you know, some money coming in from, from clients. Um, but yeah, an unreal feeling. Um, and it was just, you, you put the work in and you just see the fruits coming from, from what you've done for the few months before that has allowed you to build up to the stage of, of being able to leave. It is, it is like a really strange kind of surreal feeling. Yeah. You, you realize, I don't think people realize how enslaved they are, like, by, mm -hmm. and I, but it also, but also how important that is for the world. Because, like, if we, if we didn't have that at the same time, it just, the world wouldn't run, right? Yeah. But, but, but it is also very strange when we realize that we are literally built to be a, a cog in, in this, in this gigantic wheel that keeps, that keeps everything ticking around. It's like a, the world is like this living, breathing organism. And, it, and, it, and if, if you take away that part of it and everybody had the desire to be an entrepreneur, then it just wouldn't function. But I, th I think it's, it's as a, as an entrepreneur, there's, there's, we're constantly going through like a stage of shackles, like, and there's, I've yeah. got stages ahead of me that I haven't even got to yet. I think that yeah. the, 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 the weirdest one is then when you get to the point which you're now going to start getting to when you build a team and you become and the company becomes very self-sufficient like i i literally could could if i had no desire to grow i could not do any work for the next 10 years yeah. and i would still have cash and i'll still make money and it's a very very weird feeling then when it's like yeah. you, you've got another different level of it and i think that i think that's all part of the process and and mm. and, and whatever I, I i would suppose i'm not going to butter it up i suppose that that the, the milestones that you hit are mm. never as satisfying as no. you think they're going no. to be because it's like when you get there, you've already become partly a, like, what's the difference of hitting, what's the difference of 9K and 10K, right? Exactly. Once you hit 10, 9K, you've already accustomed to 9K. So 10K is only grand extra. So it's yeah. like you haven't, it's not like something you hit 10K and you're like, fuck me, I'm rich now. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's like, really weird. It's like, when you're growing up, like for, for me, like loving, loving sport, it was very much a case of, oh, I really want that new tennis racket. And then when you get it, it's amazing for the first few days. And after that's like, oh, what's the next new shiny object? It's like the same as you, the same as cars. Like you buy your dream car and you think, oh, okay, cool. I've had it for, I've had it for a month. It's amazing to get in, but the, that feeling wears off. And I think the most, the thing you realize, I think as you, as you grow a business and obviously you're, you're in the process far, far longer than I have been, but you realize it is not actually the money, but it's it's almost the, the freedom that you come with it. And also, I just want to touch on the whole entrepreneur thing is very over glamorized, right? It is a lot of work. It is you, you put your guts into everything. You're responsible for absolutely everything, especially when it comes to growing a team. You've got payroll to make and everything else. And people do try and just glamorize. Oh, I can go and do this whenever I want. I can do this. I can travel. <laughs> I'm earning all this cash. And it's, 
it's not the case at all, right? Yes, you might have more money in the bank, but it's it's a lot more stress. It is hard work, and yeah. you you really have got to put a lot of time into again building the building the right team, which I think is one of the hardest things to do. Which is, I think, again, where the corporate life has kind of helped me a bit because I've I've been almost accustomed to finding good people and you know, you can read it everywhere, podcasts, online, whatever else, but you can teach skills to pretty much anyone, but you can't teach almost a personality and almost someone's mindset, which is, uh, you know, we've just taken on our, our first hire um, or second hire. And, and it's much more about mindset for, for me. Yes. He, he knows what he's doing when it comes to um, almost the fulfillment side of things. And he's been in the social media management uh, and fulfillment side of it, but it's much more about having good visions, being, you know, a good communicator, being honest um, and, and having that growth mindset and wants a risk. Like, don't get me wrong. There is a place for every single person that wants to have a job and, and, and have a salary. And as you said before, the world wouldn't work if everyone was an entrepreneur, it, it wouldn't work. So it's so important to have people in, in that corporate machine and being a cog because otherwise things would stand still. Yeah, and that's perfectly okay as well. Like that's yeah, what doesn't 100%. make that person any less of like, like I, I, I hate it with a passion when people like look down on people that work in places like McDonald's. Like, it's yeah. like, what are you talking about? Like that person could be so much, and they probably are because the fact you're comment on it, they're probably so ha much happier than you are. Yeah, yeah, Their yeah. mind is just works completely different. They have different things that their body craves dopamine for. They get their satisfaction from other places. There are people that exactly. have nothing in the world, absolutely nothing. They don't have a pot to piss in who are happier than you and I are. Right. Exactly. Like, and, and I don't think anybody can ever judge that. And I think that that's it's really important to, to, to have all of that. So, yeah, I, I do. And I agree that that, that entrepreneurship is over glamorized. We take yeah. on this huge emotional burden. Right. But the thing that really that, that definitely helps me and always gets me through it, anytime I'm feeling kind of overwhelmed or stressed and, and I'm struggling for ideas is. It's that reflection on where you've come from as well. 100%. It's that monumental amount of self-discovery yes. and, and self-finding you've had. And I think that's having that hindsight and, and allowing yourself to do that. Like I love to go for a walk and just yeah. like, and just be on my own thoughts. And like, when I do that, and I'm like, maybe sometimes places, I like to go to places that I've been, like when I've been in a completely I'm, different I'm state. Yeah. And it's like, then you can truly be like, shit, I remember doing this walk and talking to myself in a yeah. completely different way. Now I'm talking to myself about a completely different narrative. And I think that really helps too. Oh, I, I love that because I, I do the exact same, like what, the same as what you do. I saw your Instagram this morning, just going out in the woods for, for a morning walk. And, yeah, you know, I love the same as you. I love being like by the water, by the coast. Um, yeah. And, you know, just going for an early morning or even a late evening walk with your, with just thinking like, just reflecting on where you've been you know you think I think oh shit you know in March I was working a, a corporate job in a and, you know I was a number in a system yeah. and now a few months on I'm I'm here like building yeah. a team and I'm doing this and I that's something I've brought also into into when I work with my clients you know it's very much a case of right guys look you know you've only been in business for, for three or four years look where you were beforehand and look where you are now because as with everyone, you know, lockdown has has meant that a lot of businesses have have really thrived because everyone has been inside and obviously shopping online. And business owners that we speak to are very much a case of, oh no, now sales have fallen off a cliff. And I'm thinking, just take a step back, right? Look at where you've come over the last three or four years. Mm. We've had three massive events that have just happened. You've got Q2, which is typically the quietest quarter for for businesses. You've got a uh, lockdown just easing. So people are actually going out and enjoying their lives. They're spending time with friends and family, going to restaurants and bars and pubs, watching the football. Mm -hmm. So they're not spending as much time online. And then you've also got everything else. And uh, you've got those two facts. And then you've iOS 14 that's just slapped everyone else in the face. So you've just got to remind people that, look, look at the journey you've come from. Look at when you started this business. And now look at, look at where you are now. And they think, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm making 40 or 50K a month. And thinking, right, in my entire life before that, I was just making that in a year. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, you've got to reflect and look back on where you are, where you started. And it's just, part, just trust the process. It's all part of the journey. Yeah, you need to have that hindsight, don't you? You do. You need to have something to- Keep to, you grounded. Like if you didn't have that, you'd just be flying around like a headless chicken and you'd, you'd yeah. always be wanting more and more and more. And yes, I think obviously as, as a business owner, you always want to be growing and building a team and, and seeing obviously mm. that your impact grow, but it is much more about looking at where you've come from and, and also looking at where you're next going. 100%. I've, I've got, I think my mindset has changed quite a lot in the last three yeah. years. I had, I had, I, I've, I've been, I still have monumental financial goals right but but my, my view on, on on getting there and the things i want to do and and the and the methods i want to take like i've got a huge ethics policy like and 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 
And the, the, I'm, I'm confident, I can confidently say that I would probably be worth 10 times what I'm worth now. I would, I would have a, a monumental amount more money than I do now. Um, if I use, if, if my ethics weren't important to me, if, if yeah. quality of life wasn't important to me, if I always wanted to work 16, 18 hour days, yeah. like I worked at the start, all of those things, if I, if I, if it, instead of buying fancy cars, fancy houses, fancy whatever holidays spending yeah. a, a, a tens or a, literally actually hundreds of thousands on things that see me absolutely no financial return but just like happiness and adrenaline yeah. and things like that if i didn't do all of those things i invested those things and put more into bitcoin or i would be just absolutely cool but my quality of life would be completely different right and i wouldn't have enjoyed the things i've enjoyed and so i really don't like that mentality of like you reinvest everything you earn you hustle until you die you just because that, that just live, it creates this sorry life. I'm never going to gain back my 20s. I'm never going to gain yeah. back this portion of my life. I'm, I'm never going to, I might look back and regret not spending the time with the people I've got around me right now because I'm pushing them away. Mm. Um, and I think that's really, really important. I think at the start, I had this diehard mentality. It's like, I'm going to make as much money as I possibly can very quickly. I'm very fortunate to, to, to make seven figures at the moment. I'm very fortunate to be in that position. Um, but I think that the, having that hindsight, going back to that, having that retrospect to like, okay, would I have been happy in this position? If someone said to me three years ago, you're going to have all of this stuff right now, I would have been like, whoa, man, I'm retired. I'm done. Yeah. I'm cool. Right. And I'm definitely not like that now because my mind has, has, has is now, it wants completely different things. Yeah. But, but three years ago, my, my 22 year old self and my 23 year old, uh, 22 would have said, that Jordan, you're you're chilling. You're cool. You're you're happy. And so I, I do. I'm like I'm like halfway. I'm settling halfway in between that mindset and the new mindset that I have. Don't get me wrong. I want to be 40 years old and sell a company for a billion dollars and yeah. start a massive philanthropy course. Right. Yeah, yeah. That goal is still there. But I'm chilling. I've got time. If I can do what I did in the next 10 years and in the, in the last three years and the next 10 years, I'm still going to be absolutely killing it. So exactly. And I, I, I think, think that's really important. I think I think I was about to say what you've just said there is is one of the most important points because. Uh, again, I think this is this is the downside of all social media because everything is again glamorized and it's very much a case of right. You need to be doing this, this, and this. You need to be putting sixteen-hour days in. You need to be getting to this revenue target. And if you want to be like that, absolutely spot on. Good for you. Go and smash it. But don't force everyone else within the space to think that way because. Yeah. Much like you, I am very much in the case of I want to grow a business, obviously for the financial reasons, but also, you know, to give back, give people jobs, being able to give people fulfilling work, being able to help businesses to grow and help them have a, have a more enriched life, if you like. And it, I don't I don't have the ambition to have a huge company. You know, I just want to be able to give back to people because I know I've been in the corporate world. I've, I've now built this company to, to where it is starting to employ people and, and give back in, in that way. And then perhaps, you know, even if it's helping coach people or whatever it might be, just to help get them out of the rat race as well. I've no idea where, you know, time is going to take me, but what you've just said, I think is just so important just to understand what you want from your, your life. Like, yeah. you know, like I follow Stephen Bartlett quite a lot and he always says, you know, he's got billionaire friends that are far, far happier and also billionaire friends that are really, really depressed and really yeah. down because of all the pressure and burdens that, all those you know high powered people have and yeah. it is very much a case of just understanding you who you are as a human being because you know better than anyone else what is important to you which is where you've got to you've got to have those social media detoxes you've got to really think of what you want to achieve and like for me and i think you're probably the same like family is a huge a huge huge thing for me so if i can earn enough to you know retire my parents and and help out my brothers so they don't have to worry financially about anything that that for me is my goal absolutely smashed then you can set another target so you just got to find what works for you yeah 100 percent. i couldn't agree more i think it's so important you have to you have to figure out your why you have to figure out what is important to you it's like there's a there's a quote in a book and i've forgotten what book it is but it's always stuck with me it's when you yourself are a success everything you touch will be successful and it's so important about being content with yourself being happy with who you are be if you if you strip away everything you take away everything you have are you still happy are you still successful as a human being within your mind it's not about just like having an incredible body and doing all this stuff it's yeah. not superficial shit it's just about you and your mind exactly and your contentment and that's the most important thing like i do i do think it is because you can get carried away with the whole process the whole the whole business side of things and growth 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 but it, it just comes down to why did you start this in the first place and me and you can both sit here and say i wanted financial freedom i wanted to be my own boss and i wanted to be happy and that that just comes down to human psychology they are the only things i need in my life to be happy like if it's a case of you know having a house you know not having a huge house but you're you're happy where you are you've got a dog or whatever it might be as long as you're happy 
that's that's something people can never never take away from you. It doesn't matter how big your bank balance is. Mate, we're on the same. We're on the same path, bro. We I are. get you. I understand you. Hundred <laughs> percent, which is good. That's why. That's again the the beauty of like diving into the whole business world because you just find so many more like minded people. Like especially you know in affluent and within the whole digital marketing space and in loads of different forums, you find people that you just gel with and you get on with. And it's, it's that, uh, that in itself is, you know, worth its weight in gold, just finding similarly minded people that you can just either chat ideas to or go on holidays with, or just, just talk general nonsense with, you know, you've just got other people you can share those, those problems or challenges or, or up, up, up hills and downhills with. I think it's my top three favorite things in the world to do is meet up with like-minded people yeah. on holiday and just talk absolute nonsense all night about world 100%. domination, about anything we want to talk about about like anything 100%. psychology mindset anything i'm just like you and you wake up in the morning you're like wow like my jaw hurts like that's yeah, but that is like that is what it is all about like a good glass of wine happy days like <laughs> fire pit sun <laughs> holidays sunsets literally <laughs> cars it. That is literally all I need to be happy. I'm, I'm done. That's me sorted. Give me that every day. But to be fair, you say give me that every day. I, I think I get bored of it, but have yeah. that almost come, coming coming every month or something, and I'm, I'm yeah. sorted. Yeah, for sure. We've all got those people you know. When you're seeing them, you know you're going to have a good chat. That's great. What would you What would you say to people that will we'll rant? I'm conscious of the time, but what would you, yeah, what yeah. Would you say to people that who are who are who are on the fence? Maybe they've just started their agency. Maybe they've even had a client and lost a client, and they're kind of in that limbo phase. You know, at stage when it's like, can I do this? Can I not do this? What would you say to those people in that position? So again, I'd, I'd say I've been there in terms of you. You want to give up on something, and you then start another business, and it it is very true that the grass is not always greener on the other side, which is like, again, like you say, I can't remember the quote, but they, it's a quote saying the grass isn't always green on the other side, just water the grass, just water the seed on your side. Okay. And that is so true because just keep like, when it comes to outreach, be consistent with your numbers and your outreach, go down the rabbit hole, look at some mentors that you want to invest in. You've seen the growth that they've had, even, if, you know, even if they're small or, you know, goals way bigger than you've got, find someone you resonate with, which is exactly why me and you are speaking today. Like yeah, yeah. When I first started looking at content a year ago. I resonated with you straight away, like genuine. You're not like all those other gurus out there. Find people you actually can, can get some value from and that uh, you, you could see yourself in their situation perhaps down the line and just trust the process. You've got to stay consistent. Buy the slight edge book. I'm not endorsed in any way, but it is. it will just get your mindset there in terms of if I can change myself for the, for the good by 1% every single day, just stick to it. So if that's outreach, stick to it. Do 10 a day, make sure you're putting the time in and trust the process because that outreach will come into fruition. Um, and the same, you know, with fulfillment, just things are always going to be good. Things are always going to be bad. Just keep testing your way through things because there's always change, right? No matter what industry you're in, there's always change. You've just got to keep, keep sticking to it. Love it. Love it, mate. G wicked. So Alex, if people want to follow your journey, what we do is, I, I don't know if I mentioned before, but um, about six months after these interviews, we do like a, a hub post, like an, a blog article where we'll do like an interview, like a catch up so people can see how you've been getting on. But if people want to follow the journey in the meantime, they want to reach out, what are the best platforms them to reach you on? I'll put some links in the description. Yeah, yeah. Um, so either follow me, add me as a friend on Facebook, follow me on uh, Instagram. It's just Alex, Alex Taylor Grout on, on Instagram um always always direct messages are always open if anyone wants any any advice wants any help if you've got any questions if you're in the corporate world you're, you're trying to leave and you want some some almost hand holding just just don't be a stranger because I, we've been there we've done that it's very much a case of now just just giving back wherever i can so yeah don't don't be a stranger love it thanks so much alex i've really enjoyed it mate Cheers, guys, thanks very much. we'll see you all soon